I prefer cats to dogs. I've been brought up with um, cats ever since I can remember. Uh, dogs are lovely and I think more loyal, but I'm just a cat person that just love cats and all animals, really. Um, but cats are my fall in life. We had no cats for a couple of years, uh, so my sister and I were about 11. We went into town on the bus without my mother knowing, and we passed this pet shop and we saw two, two kittens in there, and um, we thought, oh, let's just get one, let's just get one. So we got it in this box, brought it home, and I said to um, my father, listen, don't tell my mother that we've got a kitten, well, we're going to put it. So we put it in those days, it had coal sheds. So we put it in the coal shed. It was a mainly white with black on. And then after a couple of days of sneaking and feeding this kitten, not that we knew what we were doing, um, my mother heard this meow, wondered where it was coming from. And she looked in inside the coal shed and found this almost totally black covered kitten. We thought she was gonna go crazy, but no, she, she went crazy as for keeping it in that poor environment. It started because we had four cats four dogs. Life was, you know, great and easy. And um, then I found a kitten there, a kitten there, not knowing any, any, any better. And before you know it, you know, we've got um, a handful of, um, you know, cats here. Come with the babies. On average a day, on site alone, we get through about 20, 25 kilos. Off-site feeding, that's in, that always increases over the winter. Um, at the moment, it's about, about 15, 18 kilos a day. In the summer, that can drop to 10 because they've all gone to the taverners. So now we have an online food store. So what happens there is people donate to the food store and when Julie gets to a certain amount, um, then we, we place a food order, which is then sent um, to Athens, which is then sent to Skiathos on a pallet. We have to have a certain amount, otherwise it's gonna cost a lot of money to do that. So this will be distributed between the off-site and the on-site cats and will probably last um, a month. Teresa, Teresa, and she was this big, she was tiny. She was probably 12 weeks old when she arrived here. Across the road here is the warehouse where we store the food. And Madam gets into the sacks of food and creates holes, don't you? Hey, baby. You're lovely, and you are. Come on. Direct volunteers are, let's say about 
five or six, but they have their own feeding stations. They help, obviously, when the vets come to get them um, trapped and uh, neutered. And any, any fundraising events, I don't do any fundraising. They organise it all for me, which is fantastic. Not that we can do much fundraising, especially in the winter, because nobody, there's hardly anybody on Ski Athos. Well, I do this every single day of the year. Um, in, the win in the winter, it's necessary. In the summer, it's not so necessary because all the tavernas are open, the hotels are open, the tourists come and they help by feeding them, you know, and they get attached to them. But it's the winter time it, they need the help, you know. This is a nice little spot down here, which is away from the road, which is great. You know, it's not quite so dangerous. You see the two little kittens here. There were a, well, there's two here now. The two just here. We had six. We're down to two. So sadly, I think they got run over. The nice thing about this spot is that the, the chap here who has the taverna, which is Strophilia, they feed them. You know, they like cats, and so they feed them. They feed them in the summer. He comes out, he'll feed them in the winter, you know. So we get a little bit of help. During the winter, they come out during the winter, and they do work on their place. You know, they do it up, they do it. And when he comes out, he, he'll bring a bit of food and feed them, you know, which is very nice. Everything outside of Skiathos town is closed. There are no tavernas open just on the outskirts, outskirts of Skiathos, perhaps, but outside of Skiathos town, there's nothing. It's all closed, they all shut down, and they all go away and they have a break, you know, because they've worked hard all summer, and uh, they just want to have a break and get away. Some go back to the, the towns where they've come from, other parts of Greece. Uh, some live in Skiathos, but this chap lives in Skiathos. But they also have places away, and they, they just have a break, you know. It's a, it's a seven month closed season. They've got to survive for seven months on their, on their own, or with our help, basically. And that's why it's just so important that there's a few of us that feed them, you know. The Greeks, I don't know, they would just let them do the best they can, you know. But there isn't really enough food for them, for them to catch it within, you know, naturally. They need, they need sustenance, they need it, they need some help. But we also do it because we want to catch them and neuter them. That's one of the main reasons why we do it. We want to catch them, get them used to us, have them neutered, and that helps us a lot and keeps the population down. Otherwise, it would be just crazy. To reduce the numbers, at the end of the season, when the tourists had left um, the island, many hotel owners would literally poison them, you know, which is not a very nice way to go. And other bad things they would do to them as well. However, that has now changed a lot. Many, many years ago, people obviously didn't like the fact that there's so many sick looking kittens and cats begging at Taverners, which was, you know, an awful sight to see. When I was feeding off-site cats, um, the Greeks were very, very, well, they didn't like what I was doing. So many arguments, why are you feeding them? Just let them find the food. If they're going to die, they're going to die. But since then, they've changed a lot. But there's still the old um, parents that think the cats are vermin, and um, they will, you know, teach the children not to like the cats, and often you see little children, you know, either kicking them, pushing them away, or chasing after them, and it's just not the right way to go. It's all got to be education, but however, there is a lot of young people now on the island that um, are aware of trying not to be cruel to animals. People tend to think that they are dirty because they go to their flower pots and they poo inside. So they don't really like them in Skiathos. Not only Skiathos really, it's, they don't really like them in Greece. But uh, this has changed a lot. And this is very important to say that they, it has changed a lot in Skiathos because they see that when they are neutered, they are very clean. 
And also we try to educate them, to show them that the cats, they hunt mice, they hunt all rodents, and this is the main reason that Scathos doesn't have a mice problem. As regards to the welfare of animals, not only on Skiathos, in Greece, the awareness is now um, abundant and kittens that were dumped or found in the dustbin by garbage men, if they do found, find them now, they have to actually report it to the um, municipality who then you know, gets out one of their animal people to go and rescue the kittens and then which obviously end up here. And if anybody is caught or suspicious in poisoning or harming any animals, then there is a great, great big fine now. Next to the last one, but this is the, one of the main ones. And they're all going to run out. This is one of the famous, well, probably the most famous one, the dive shop, straight the kiosk, feeding station. Been feeding here for at least 10 years, started off with six. Come on. And the blind cat I feed across the road. Come on. He's pulling his paw out because he's waiting for pasta that Linda feeds him. I haven't got any pasta today, mate. It was <laughs> blind by trauma, but because he knows the area, hello, we've left him and he seems to get on very well. Hey. The best way forward for any animal and to try and make them live longer is, is neutering. Neutering does help a lot of future problems with cats. Apart from keeping the population down, it makes the island a better place. We've neutered up to now well over 6,000 cats since 2007. We have about 2,000 cats on the island. In order to minimize or stabilize the population, we should have neutered around 1,500 cats. We managed to neuter about 600 cats per year as a charity alone, and the municipality of Skiathos neuters another 100 cats. We need another 200 or 300 per year to stabilize the population, but the, it, the situation is much, much better than it was three years ago. We are quite lucky to have a municipality in the last few years that is a, an actual animal lover municipality. It is a municipality that wants to help and even though the Greek public sector is like a snail, goes slowly, slowly until you die from the slowness, they really care. So they are doing whatever they can to assist in our in whatever, in all of our activities. They do not oppose us, they are on our side. And uh, although the program they have, it's very small, uh, they do their best, they do. And I can see they're trying. They, are, they have a neutering program, which is for 100 cats per year. We are trying to increase this, but it's a bit tricky because we need more vets. It is, we need some work in that. They have a, also a feeding program for the cats. They've started last year and it goes on this year. It is done with our help as well. They have put uh, around the island 10 feeders and they get some food regularly and they fill these feeders. Sometimes of course they empty but we help in showing them that they are empty and they fill them up again. Generally they are full. And uh, they also are, we are also trying now to start an educational program on the schools to go and talk to the, to the young people and uh, try to show them why they should care about animals, treat them well, and what to do to help them, to help also stabilize their population. We would like to adopt as many cats as possible because number one issue is that they get more one-to-one -one attention. They get more spoilt and more loved 
I can't give 200 cats individual attention, more love than, you know, than, than that's possible at the moment. And they do, all the ones that we've adopted, do settle down very well, very well. So, yeah, we need adopting, we need adoptions just to take, you know, the pressure off the new cats that always comes in. Eve, or a volunteer, goes to each proposed adopted um, cat's home and they just make sure that the house is clean. They have an interview to um, ask about cats they've had in the past, cats have got now, um, are they going to be at work for 24-7, the environment and the warmth that the proposed adoptee shows towards the cats that they have or the way they answer questions and the passion they have. All the funds to feed, make healthy, vet visits, medication, take sick cats to the vet, all comes by online donations. We receive no official funding whatsoever. We have nobody that is um, paid a wage or salary. Everything's done on a voluntary basis. And so it's all the kind people that support us and send whatever they can to feed and keep the cats healthy. No, 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 don't come over the white line. I'm not so opposed to either. <laughs> Here we are again, happy as can be. <laughs> come on. Hello, Come on. Come on. Hello. I'm going to trip over one day, I know. I have a lot of respect for, for Sharon because she spends all her days, every day of the week, you know, from early morning to late at night because she looks after all these kittens that are sick and, you know, blind and they've lost their mum. Or... So she, she does a lot. I, this, this, this takes me an hour a day, you know, let's say an hour a day. Sharon's on it, she's on it for about 12 hours a day, you know, non-stop. You know, I have a lot of respect for her and, and, you know, I'd just like to help in any way I can, basically. I'm retired now, I don't have any much to, you know, else to occupy me other than look after my house. Um, and I'm with my, my wife and, uh, you know, we just, I enjoy doing it. I just really enjoy doing it. Anybody come in? Well, the wind really got up uh, last night and um, the lids off the food and the litter, the lids off the litter trays, the water bowls, the food bowls, everything was just in this area this morning. And of course it makes it very difficult to feed um, and obviously difficult to, to clean as well. But as you can see, it's um, still very, very high. Uh, and the cats try and congregate in one area, but the main thing is, is constantly, you know, finding the debris, the food and uh, the water bowls and keeping them um, in some sort of sheltered area. And there's not enough space in weather like this. It's just impossible and everything's falling apart. And this supposed area that was meant for the blind cats, see, eight indoor blind cats is just, for me, not adequate. I cannot put eight blind cats in here at all. It is impossible. Blind, got lost twice, very clever. This is Antonio, this is famous Antonio, because Antonio, um, grooms all the kittens when they come in. She loves them and they all go to her, don't they? Hey? 
loads of kittens last summer. The baby. When it rained the other day, the water just went in everywhere. Um, again, you know, so it's either the wind or the rain really makes damage. You, you never know from one week to the next week what the weather's going to be like. So if it's going to be raining next week, I'll have to change and move everything. And if it's windy the following week, change and move everything around and keep looking at the weather at least three or four days in advance to find out, you know, the easiest solution of feeding them and keeping them dry and warm. But the kittens I, um, are in bed bound when it's bad weather because, you know, the worst thing in the winter is all the, the kittens that end up sick and you're medicating all day. Um, and I don't want them to come out and get, you know, and get worse, especially when it's cold and raining. So we are trying to seek land where we can transfer all the cats. The most important thing is that the area or land needs to be away from other houses. So I'm going to fixate my dream here. My dream would be if we were able to um, afford this land would be to make a car park just here on the left if this was possible, were to make you know the trees into cat houses, make storage for food and um, uh, and bedding, and in the middle, put a, you know make something solid so when people are here, um, they can medicate the cats in a specific area. Um, it's in a quiet location um, with not really any neighbours. This would be an area where we could build a proper area for all the blind cats. A big area, they can't get out, they're secure, with toys, beds in. Now another piece of the land, the plan would be to build a specific quarantine stroke kitten area. So all the kittens that come in to care can be put in a separate area and um, be medicated, treated, etc., and not be um, in contact with the adult cats. We would like a flat pack, whatever log. We don't want to build anything with cement. We want something simple. And this asking price at the moment is 70,000 euros, which people say is not too bad for where it is in a quiet, you know, a quiet location and um, people can get here, get here easily as well. Skiathos is, I think, the most, or the third most expensive island next to Mykonos Santorini. The cost of everything here, because it has to be imported, of course, from the mainland or anywhere else, it's very, very expensive. Um, so any raw materials, because again, imported, it's going to cost a lot of money not to just purchase the land but find the materials at a decent price to make all the necessary things that need to be made. So we need to find the land urgently, we need to get things done on the land urgently before we can actually even think about moving the cats in a very gentle, calm way. It would be nice if you could have a place similar-ish to the dog shelter where it's accessible for tourists to come visit at virtually any time, bring funding and bring food uh, and toys and come to spend time with the cats. Where's all the black cats? All the black cats come on me here. Hello, who's this? Panther. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Hello. Pippa, hello. Hello, gate cat. Hello, Mr. No Ears. Hi, baby. Hi. Hello, chick. Chick, 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 chick. Hello. 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 
probably 10% don't get on, but the rest of them, which is, you know, 160, 70, get on remarkably well in such tight spaces, don't you, eh? Mr. Snotty Nose. Hello, Mr. Big Nose. Big nose, no ears. Hmm? Never seen a little paws and a big nose. So I call them the three amigos. One and two we have here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loving cats, beautiful, beautiful. As for the future of these cats and other cats that we either feed or neuter, there's going to be, you know, a period of time where it's going to have to be taken over. Um, OK, most of the volunteers are retired. However, I'm the youngest one at the moment, being 57, but after lifting so many tonnes of food and litter and being out in all elements for years and years, my hands are arthritic, my knees are not good, my back is not good and I'm still doing it because it needs to be done. So we need young blood. We need young people. But if, if something doesn't happen and we don't move on with this project of finding land, suitable land, um, and taking care of the new generations of kittens, making sure they're all still being neutered, etc., then this island within 18 months would go back 10 years. And that's a very sad thought from all the work and strain and, and, and waking up in the middle of the night and the, the tears, the sadness, you couldn't save this one, would have gone. This is one of the futures of Skiathos, a dumped kitten, which we receive many, many of. If we don't get this place, and if we don't get help, and we don't get funds, this little thing, along with the sick cats, and the blind cats, will have a huge problem. Bye, Flora. I miss you.